Welcome back to Homegrown Passion. In today's video, I'm going to give you an update on my Rockwell uh, Oasis comparison. Doug's going to show you some motors he got for the high tunnel. I take a little bit of a road trip and we'll show you how much I made on my little bean plot. So stay tuned. Okay, here's my trial between the Oasis Cube and Rockwell. So we're showing the Oasis right here. I seeded this on the 6th and today is the 19th, so almost two weeks ago. Looking pretty good. Here's the rock wool. Not quite as large and I had a couple of the um, cultivars not germinate very well. Mainly green forest up there. So I'm going to go ahead and put these guys in the channel now and see what happens with them. Okay, so I'm going to get these guys planted in the channels and I'm going to go through and see how many didn't germinate. This is the uh, Oasis Cube. And then I'll go do the same thing for the rock wool. And I'll show you a picture of that too when I get there. Here's the rock wool. I started pulling some apart here, some Tropicana, and get them into the channels. The plants are a little bit smaller than the ones in the Oasis. And up farther there, the green Salanova oak leaf and the green forest didn't germinate too well. And it looks like the Rex is fine. So I'm keeping notes to see how many didn't germinate, like I said, from the Oasis. And I'll do the same for the rock wool. And we'll go from there. So here's my conclusion from my unscientific experiment here at Bradwood Farm between Rockwool and Oasis. The Oasis cubes did wonderful, the Rockwool failed. I never had this much of a failure rate when I was using Rockwell when we first started. So I talked to Nathan at uh, Crop King and he said maybe I didn't rinse the Rockwell cube, the pad, long enough. He says I really have to really super rinse it. And I did it as long as I did the Oasis, so maybe it wasn't quite long enough because the Oasis, my germination rate was 98%. The Rockwell here, as you can see from all this leftover, was uh, 70%. I kept track of everything I was planting. Did really bad in germinating the red Salanova oak leaf and the uh, green forest so I'm not sure what happened there now Tropicana all of it germinated in the rock wall so and it was all different stages inside the uh, pad so it wasn't just the front or the end or the middle it was all over the place so it wasn't that I didn't get uniform saturation through there the only other fail I had with the uh, rock wall is I was getting very frustrated because it's hard for me to tear it apart and get the blocks, the cubes, I should say, uniform in size. So when you go to put them into your channel, they go in nice and even. Because see here, you know, you get this little extra thing here. So when you go to put it in, you got to smush it down and push it in there. And a lot of times I push it in too hard and it gets underneath the channel and I have to take the lid off and try to prop it back up again. So for me, Oasis is still a winner. I really like it and it's a lot easier to do. And so in talking to Nathan, he is going to recreate this experiment in the scientific greenhouse over there at uh, Crop King. And he's going to see which one fares better, Oasis or Rockwell. And uh, we'll compare the notes. He's going to update me on it and we'll get it out here on a video for you. So it'll probably be a couple weeks because it's going to take a little bit to germinate and get it all in the channels and the stuff. So we'll see what happens. But I'm still going to do updates on which one grew better in the channels because I do have the Rockwell and the Oasis Cube in the channel. So we'll see which set, you know heads of lettuce get bigger since I all have the same cultivar in each one of the types of uh, mediums here. So I'll be able to bring them in here and weigh them out and see which ones got bigger. So it should be an interesting little, like I said, non-scientific experiment here. So my Amazon package arrived and I got my two high tunnel motors uh, that are going to roll up and down the sides of the high tunnel. I also got it with a control box. Now this box controls each motor. There's a switch for each motor and it's an on off. And remember these are 24 volts. I opened this case up and there's a transformer in there. However, this transformer is not made to stay on the whole time. It's got an on-off switch. So I won't be able to use this for my idea, which is to control these motors with a thermostat. So I bought a 24 volt thermostat. This one does heating and cooling. And what I'm going to have to do with this to make this work is I'm going to have to get a 24 volt transformer and I'll probably have to get some diodes to protect this from back surging back into it because the way these motors work is you have positive and negative makes it run one way and then you switch the polarity of it and then it'll run 
the reverse way. So that won't work with this system unless I put diodes in it. And I've got to find a continuous 24 volt transformer to make it work and a box. So I'll be researching this. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and install these now so Katie doesn't have to wind up or roll down the high tunnel every day. She can just come in, flip a switch, and each one of these motors and decide how long or how high and tall she wants to put the sides. So this is pretty exciting. I'm going to get this installed. I'll show you how I do that. It's, good. it's real easy. And we'll go from there. So here are the green beans that I'm growing for my farmer's market that's coming up in a couple weeks. These guys have taken off. I don't know if you can show all the way up there. They're really growing, so I'm expecting a good harvest. So I thought I'd give you an update on the little patch I had over on the other side of the greenhouse there. And I had 56 plants and 7 beto buckets, and I sold 33 pounds of them. That doesn't include the amount that we ate ourselves, so we harvested way more than that. And I harvested 7 different times off of them and made over $200. What a nice little investment in that little spot there. The reason I pulled them is they were, stop, they were still producing, but they weren't producing enough, so it wasn't warranted to keep them in there. And um, here's some videos showing how I took them down. I usually just hack off the middle and take off the bottoms and throw it away. Then I get on the ladder and I take off the top. So that's the easiest way I found to, to clean them out when you get them out. But yeah, good little investment. So I'm excited to see how these do at the farmer's market because I've never sold them in the summer's farmer's market. I've always sold them in the winter time. So we'll see what happens. So got myself cleaned up a little bit, put my Bradwood shirt on, and I'm heading out to Crop King. They have the grower's school this week. And every Friday I come in for about a half hour, 45 minutes, and talk to the class and tell them what it's like to be a new grower, even though I'm not new anymore, but how I started up and how we got going in our transition from doing grocery stores to our CSA to our farm market. So it's always a good time, and it's a good place to learn about uh, hydroponics. So if you're interested in you should check out Crop King and go to their grower's school. Well, it got pretty warm today, so I'm standing back here by the wet wall, cooling off. Feels really good. What a difference it really makes here in the greenhouse. So I hope you guys like today's video. We always have fun doing things and experimenting with things. So please like and subscribe. And remember to please leave me any questions, comments, and suggestions down below. And we'll see you guys next video. Mm -hmm.